I think that it's very, very appropriate tonight that we have uh, Dr. Pendikur as our speaker because he was one of Dallas's students, one of his earliest uh, students at, at SFU. And uh, I myself was a student at the time as well, so I feel really happy to have a classmate back to come and, and do this presentation after so many years. And I really think it's very, very appropriate that uh, we have Manju Pandekar to do this because uh, it's not just that he was one of Dallas's students, but that he's carried on a tradition that Dallas uh, is identified with, uh, which really has to do with the development of, of uh, writing and thinking and analysis in the area of critical political economy of communications. And I also think there's a, a very interesting relationship between the work that Dr. Pendikur has done in recent years and the work that Dallas uh, had been engaged in while he was an active scholar here at SFU. Uh, part of that has to do with, although this is not the topic tonight, uh, study of the media in Canada. And Dr. Pendikur did uh, a, um, a, a book called Canadian Dreams and American Control, the Political Economy of the Canadian Film Industry, uh, which came out in 1990. And some of you may be familiar with Dallas's own work called Dependency Road, in which he was looking at a very similar uh, issue having to do with their, our relationship with our big lumbering neighbor <laughs> to the south. And so I think this is also a side of the work that Dr. Pendikur has done. And he's continued that work and helped to bring awareness of what's been going on in the north uh, while he's been working in the United States, which I think is also um, a real contribution. Uh, he's also helped to bring awareness of Dallas's work to people around the world. He was one of the co-editors of the book Illuminating the Blind Spots, uh, having to do with Dallas's work on the blind spot theory, uh, uh, which some of you may be familiar with, and I won't, I won't attempt to explain tonight. But uh, this was a set of essays in honor of Dallas, and one of those essays actually was by Dr. Pendikur himself. Uh, and interestingly, that essay is about India and his own uh, observations of what was happening in Indian villages while he was traveling in India. And I think this is also something related to work that Dallas did, although Dallas's focus was not on India, it was on China. And I was very aware of that because I was working in China at the time. And that's where my research was concentrated. And uh, so this interest in the third world and the relationship between the third world and the so-called first world or um, the industrialized world and, and uh, uh, the rest of the world is also something that has typified Dr. Pendiker's work all his life and this concern with the phenomenon of globalization. So I think it's quite appropriate that tonight he is focusing on Indian cinema in the era of globalization. I want to tell you just a little bit uh, about Dr. Pendikur. I don't know a whole lot, but uh, I want to share with you a few details. Uh, he was born and grew up in India uh, before he moved to Canada, uh, and he studied cinematography, and I think this is important because uh, he studied at the Madras Institute of Film, Techn Film Technology, and he actually worked on three full-length uh, feature films in India as well as a television series in the United States. So this is not an armchair theorist. This is a person who's worked in the industry, has, an, has a, an appreciation of what it's like on the inside. And that side of Dr. Pendikur, I think, is quite important because it means that he doesn't only look at its impact on audiences. He also looks at it on its impact on those who are working in the industry itself and issues about labor relations and the labor process. And that's a part of his work that I have especially appreciated because I do a lot of work in the area of workplace communication and workplace relations. Uh, so some of you may be unaware of that, but I think that that brings a dimension to his work that uh, uh, some people might not appreciate without sort of realizing that he's been uh, doing that kind of work as well. A lot of people, the immediate interest, when you, when you talk about Bollywood, you start thinking Hollywood impacts on people's consciousness and this sort of thing, and certainly he has a lot to say there. But he does a political economy analysis, and I think we'll get a taste of that tonight to see how he approaches the political economy of communication. 
his latest publication, uh, and I think is probably going to be the research for that is probably uh, guiding a lot of what he has to say tonight, uh, is Indian popular cinema, industry, ideology, and consciousness. And so I um, look forward to what he has to say tonight. He is, uh, I think, uh, uh, the um, carrying on the tradition of critical political economy and communication, uh, but he's also done work in critical uh, and cultural theory, uh, which gives a sort of dual dimension to his work, the cultural side and the political economy side. Uh, he's done a lot of work on third world cinema, uh, he's interested in issues of globalization and public policy, and I'm hoping that uh, his presentation tonight will give us a taste of how he blends all of these aspects of his work uh, into his latest work at Indian Cinema. With that, I give you Dr. Pendergrass.